I'm Marcus Mapera. I'm director of the blood and marrow transplantation program at New York Presbyterian Hospital, Columbia University Medical Center, and I'm an associate professor of medicine at Columbia University College of Physicians and Surgeons in New York City. I chose to become a bone marrow transplanter because as a physician scientist, I thought bone marrow transplant is, uh, has the unique opportunity of really translating research, which we're doing at the bench, very rapidly to the bedside. Patients who are referred to me, uh, basically most of them require a transplant and there are two types of transplants which are uh, at our disposal. The one is called autologous stem cell transplant, which basically um, where the patient serves as his or her own donor and those patients usually have a certain malignancy uh, of their blood forming system and uh, so what we do there is that we first collect their stem cells, freeze that part of the cells down and then administer high doses of chemotherapy to those patients to eradicate the underlying malignancy and um, then give those cells back to, re, uh, to rebuild the blood forming system. The other type of uh, transplant is called allogeneic transplant and there basically we are looking for a donor uh, who will serve uh, for the patient. This could either be a related sibling or this could also be an unrelated donor. And uh, the process is that we uh, first evaluate the patient, whether the patient is a good candidate for one of the two procedures I just mentioned and then uh, make uh, sure that the patient is really fit enough and healthy enough to go through the procedures and then in the case of the donor transplant whether the patient has a donor available either in the family or in the worldwide donor banks. It's extremely important to have a strong bond between the patient and the physician and uh, therefore it's frequently very important in the first interaction you have so when the patient comes for the initial evaluation to really establish that trust and to really use that initial encounter to advise the patient you know, what the best course of their treatment would be and even to potentially if you f figure out that you know, this may not be the best treatment at your institution to then use this encounter to advise the patient where else to go. So therefore we really see that first encounter as an important step in really building the, the trust which may also then uh, lead to having the patient really evaluate all other options. It's really a whole team approach where all of the relevant specialties are spending time with the patient to again to really discuss the whole process in detail. So we have a social worker who will talk to the patient, we have a financial counselor who will talk about the economic aspects of the transplant care. We obviously have you know, our medical team who will discuss uh, medical side effects of the transplant. We in fact spend a lot of time explaining the whole process to the patient and uh, really trying by really spelling out all the little steps in the way which the patients have to take to get to the transplant to really take away some of that fear the patients may have. New York Presbyterian really is a world-class medical center uh, which has a number of experts in cardiology and nephrology which we all may need if the patients do develop some uh, complications. A good example of our patients with uh, amyloidosis who have uh, a serious disease which affects a number of organs um, and those patients um, also can undergo an autologous stem cell transplant. However, those patients usually are quite sick and so here New York Presbyterian again has the unique resources of really dealing with all those different organs affected. And so this is a unique team approach which we have here which not only focuses on cancer but also on the whole patient.